Hi everyone, welcome back to Mike Nelson Maths. I'm Mike and today I'm going to take you through an engaging way to launch the concept of mixed and improper fractions as well as the idea of counting fractions. Now this can turn into a lesson or this could be one that you put in front of a different lesson, it's up to you. What we're going to look at first though, before we get going into how I would discuss this topic, is that a common misconception that actually holds students back from being able to explore deeper and more complex ideas around fractions, and that is their definition of the denominator. So often when we introduce fractions, we look at the idea of part of a whole, and we have the students draw the fraction, we write the fraction, we name the fraction, and we work with activities like that. And we give them this definition, or a variation of this definition, that the numerator, this number three refers to the number of parts I need. Often students will refer to it as being the parts that are shaded or the color, whatever the problem is. And that this part is the number of parts altogether, which works really, really well at the beginning. What it doesn't do, however, is handle the idea of what fractions actually are. So I'm gonna draw a fraction that I often work with my students. and like this. So this fraction and this fraction are both variations of three fourths. And often students have great difficulty. They'll name this as two thirds because there's two parts that are shaded and there are three parts all together. To which I'll follow up with a question of, well, if this part's a third and this part's a third, would you be happy if this was say a block of chocolate and you got this part and I ate that part? And Usually that prompts the response of, no, that's not fair. Why is it not fair? Well, it's not equal. This part is obviously bigger than that part. Well, they can't be thir thirds then, because thirds is three equal pieces. But often students are so drilled down to this being the number of pieces altogether that this kind of fraction doesn't work for them. Following on to that, How would you draw that fraction? If your understanding is that this is seven pieces all together and the, there are four pieces all together, well, this is impossible. And often students will say that this fraction can't exist. So what we need to do is give them a different definition that is able to handle this, able to handle this, and able to handle that. So what definition do we replace it with? Well, what we need to understand is the, the language that we use. This is three fourths. And often, and how I work with my students, is that seven fives. So it's not seven times five, it's not seven groups of five, it's seven fives. It's a count of a unit. And that the reason we use that language is exactly the same as the reason we use it over here. It's a count of a unit. There are three Fourth. So this is four equal pieces. This refers to the size of the pieces. Or Dr. James Tanton refers to, a, this is a repeated iteration of a unit fraction. So three fourths is one fourth, and then another fourth, and then another fourth. And that would give you three fourths. And we can count them. One fourth, two fourths, three fourths. This is three fourths. This is not the same fraction. So it can't be counted. It's not a count of a unit. But we can count this one because if we had this one and then we repeated it onto this side, we would have halves. So this part here is currently showing one half. This part here will be one, two, and then we have the same on the other side, three fourths. So this is one fourth, and this is one fourth. And then obviously we can start to work into the world of equivalent fractions and we have one, two, three, four. So this is two fourths and one fourth. So that's one fourth, two fourth, three fourth, and four fourth. So what I like to do is give students a lot of these kind of activities, a lot of activities where the pieces are unequal. We always seem to give students fractions in which only one fraction is represented in the diagram because it links nicely to what we've written. 
But this is only the basic one. This is also three fourths, but it doesn't look like that. And it doesn't follow that same definition. We give this diagram because it follows the definition of the number of parts all together, rather than this is the size of the parts within one hole. So within this hole, there are one piece that if you repeated it, you would have four of them. If you have this piece, you would have two of them. So this is seven groups of one fourth. So we know that four fourths would make up one, and then we're gonna have some extra on top of that. So once we've got a good understanding and a good definition of what the denominator is showing, then the idea of mixing in proper fractions start to take on a, bit of, a better shape. And something that we use a lot is the measuring cups. And what it clearly shows, first off, is when we're looking at this, is that when the denominator, the size of the piece, is getting smaller. So if you have three of them, that's bigger than if you have four of them because the size is getting smaller because the number of them is getting smaller. But what it also starts to show us is it is the ability to count. So this is a hole, this one here, and we can fill that up using the cups. And we get the students to count. One fourth, two fourths, three fourths, four fourths. And it's a bit hard to see in the film, but that's pretty much up to the top. So one hole is made up of four fourths. And each time I poured it in, I counted it. But what I can do though, is go beyond that. If I had a container that was more than a hole, well, it's gonna be able to hold more of them. So one fourth, two fourths, three fourths, four fourths, do that. Five fourths, six fourths, seven fourths, eight fourths. So when we get up to two, two is eight fourths. And we can start to see that we can count these exponentially. We can go as many as we like. But what that starts immediately in my mind and what I want to drill into the students is was the number of these that I had. So if I go back to the start, I have one fourth, two fourths, three fourths, four fourths. But I have one cup, one whole cup. So that's one and one fourth, one and two fourths, one and three fourths, one and four fourths. One and four fourths is two cups. So now I have two, I have two, and one fourth. So what I would be, what I might have is I might have two groups in my class as I'm doing this. One's counting just the number of fourths that I used. One's counting the number of cups, the number of holes, and then the fourths. So we might have one fourth, two fourths, three fourths, and then we're gonna differ. One group saying four fourths, the other group saying one. The next one is five fourths, one and one fourth. So we're starting to get a practical application of this. And we can start to pose problems. My recipe calls for one and a half cups. I don't have a one and a half cup. How can I make it? Well, I could, and obviously, what's the simplest way? Well, the simplest way would be to actually physically make that. So one cup, and then a half a cup. One and a half cups, nice and easy. But what if I don't want to use this? What if I want, don't want to use two cups? What if I only want to use one cup? Well, then I could use this. So that's half a cup. That's a whole cup, or well, two halves. And that's three halves. So one and a half is the same as three halves. Or I could go into here. So one and a half, what's that the same as when we're working four? So we're now we're starting to explore the world of equivalent fractions, but still based on this idea of counting the fractions and being able to convert between mixed and 
improper. And we say mixed because it's a mix of whole numbers and fractions. And improper just refers to the fact that the denominator is equal or greater to, sorry, the numerator is equal or greater to the denominator. So well, then we have a look. Okay, so we can make one and a half cups with this one and this one. We can make one and a half cups with just this one. We can make one and a half cups with just this one. Can we do this one? Can we get a half from that? And we can obviously explore. No, but what kind of cup would we need? Well, we could do one of this and this. Okay, we could do three of these and then one of these, make one and a half. We could do three of these and then two of these. Okay, we can't do this. But what other cup could we use for it? Well, we could have a variation of the eighth or we could have the sixth. So we could have this go in three times and then a sixth go in. We can explore that. Will that work? Will that not work? These are all just sort of problems we want to pose to the students. So rather than a series of activities between converting between the two, I like to really work on this ability to play around and explore. And you can have this on the table. It's four cups and some water. You could have rice, you could have whatever you're trying to fill the cups up to. But it's just a more practical way of dealing with it. And what it does is you're just changing the size of the unit. So when you're changing the denominator, you're changing the size of it. So one of these and one of these and one of these and one of these are not the same because they're not the same size. So because you change the size, you change the amount that will fit into one hole. So two of these, four of these, three of these. The denominator refers to how many will fit into the hole because that's their size. Three repeated of these will make one of those. One of the four of those, two of those. If it's an eight, it will have eight. If it's a 22nd, it will take 22 pieces. So this is just a different way of exploring those, but it's all built around the idea of changing the definition that we give students because having that in there doesn't work once you go beyond a hole. So early on, it works really well. You know, kids are only working up to a hole. And then we have this sort of jump and we can then just impose rules. So one and a half, how do you convert that to an improper fraction? You know, working with, you know, multiplying the denominator by the, new, by the whole number. Just things like that, the, the rules that we were taught as kids, but it doesn't really explain why. Well, it's just converting back to this going into four of these. So all I've done is if I've got one and a half, sorry, I've got this, I'm just turning that, if I want to take that from mixed, mixed is one and a half like that. All I'm saying is what if I took away this and just had that? Well, that's what an improper fraction is. It's just using one of these, not a whole and these. So one and a half, what would it be if I converted it to an improper fraction with this? Okay, well, it would be the four that were here and however many of these that I needed. If it's two and three quarters, well, it's this broken into that twice, so eight pieces, and then three of these makes 11 fourths. I would need 11 of these to fill this bowl up with two and three quarter cups of water. So we start to be able to do a bit more hands-on and actually see these fractions coming rather than trying to just deal with the numbers, but more importantly, not just looking at it as being the number of parts altogether, because one and a half had three parts, one of these and one of these, which obviously isn't the fraction that I'm referring to, but it had three of the size of this. And it had, or in a mixed fraction, it had one of these and one of these of these size. So hopefully this is something that you can take into your classroom. Hopefully it's something that can help students get a better idea of how these fractions are working. Good luck and have fun.